Hello and welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today we're going to learn a little trick on how to run any Linux GUI program in a web browser. So in my building an Ubuntu desktop and Docker presentation, we learned how to run a full Ubuntu desktop inside of Docker. To do that, we use the Docker build command to build a custom Docker image. We created a Docker container from that custom image. And then in my Docker networking presentation, we saw how you can also create a Docker network on your main LAN or VLAN. This time we're going to learn how to create a Docker application to run any Linux GUI program in a web browser. To render a GUI application in a web page, we are going to use an open source X11 display server called Xpra. Xpra provides a persistent remote display server for forwarding applications and even desktops. Xpra also includes a built-in HTML5 client with GUI tools and support for sound and notifications. So we're going to create a custom Docker file and we simply edit a file called Docker file. And here are the contents of my Docker file, which will also be included in the show notes. So from Ubuntu 2004, that's our starting point for our container. We're running an apt update because we want to make sure that the repositories are all up to date. And then we're installing a series of programs. Uh, the program we're going to use as an example for this uh, particular presentation is called DIA. DIA is a diagramming editor, and DIA is somewhat similar to Microsoft Visio. And then we're running, we're installing GNUPG, we're installing WGET, we're installing App Transport, HTTPS, and Software Properties Common. And then we're doing a wget on the public key for uh, Xpra. And that's what GNUPG is for. GNUPG manages our public keys. And then we're adding the apt repository for Xpra. We're performing another update. And then we're installing Xpra. And finally, now that we have all the dependencies installed and we have our DIA diagram program installed, we're going to issue a command expra start, and we're going to tell it that we want expra to actually start the program DIA, and we're going to bind it to any IP address, and then I just picked port 8080 for inside the container, but I could have picked really any port number that I wanted to, and then I say HTML equals on, and then I'm doing a tail dash F to slash dev slash null. So the purpose of this tail, this is called a tail follow command. The purpose of this tail command is that normally when you perform a command in a Docker container, it will perform that command and exit. We don't want it to perform the command and exit. We want it to be able to stay running the container as long as the user is doing something. And so the tail command uh, going to the null device is just a, a fancy way of keeping that container up and running. Okay, and then we're going to build the custom image from the Docker file. And that's simply docker build space dash t and then linux dash command a space and a period. And that just says build it in the current location. And so I'm just calling my custom image Linux dash command. Then I want to start the container. So I want to run the container on port 18,080 just because I made up that port number. You can choose any port number you want that's unused on your Docker host. And a simple way to do that is a Docker run dash D for detach dash P for port number, and I want to expose port number 18,080, which will actually be port 8080 inside the container that you saw that we created from the Docker build. And then I'm going to call my container 
dia because that's the application it's running and the image that I'm going to run the docker image is Linux dash command you could have also created a docker dash compose yaml file and if so its contents would very simply be what you see here I'll include all of these in the show notes depending upon your preferences you can use either one so if we had used a docker compose uh, file then in order to start the container we would have done a docker dash compose space up dash d to detach so here we are at the command prompt and I've already created a couple of files in here in fact if you do an ls you can see that I have the docker compose.yaml and I have the docker file so if I go back to a web browser here I happen to be using a QNAP NAS and so I have created a uh, uh, a file station location for those files but any docker host will work and this is container station we won't be using any of the commands in container station because we're going to be doing all of these commands uh, from the CLI so to begin with if we look at the docker file if I cat the docker file there it is and if I want to create the image the command that I'm going to use is the docker build command docker build dash t and I just decided I wanted to call it Linux dash command and I want it to be located in the current folder so I execute this and it would generally take a lot longer uh, it's just that I've already built this thing and so it's out there and it didn't need to rebuild itself um, it may take up to 15 20 minutes to go off and build this depending on the speed of your particular host and then if I do a docker run command to create a container from the image that we just created and offer it on port 18,080 it does that and if I do a docker ps you can see that I have a image called Linux dash command and it is up and running and the name of this particular container is dia off to the right side we can see this a little bit easier in the GUI for QNAP container station you see dia is up and running and it's running from Linux command and it's just a feature they have here where I can click on this but I'd be going to the address of my docker host and then port 18,080 because that's the port number I set and when I click on that it goes into it and there we are we have our diagramming program dia up and running I can resize I can move this thing around it's like its own little desktop I can even go full screen on this thing and then that becomes my entire desktop uh, for running this particular application but this application is running in a web browser if I exit that and come back you can see it's running in the web browser tab so you can you can create these containers using Expra and you can run multiple apps on them and in fact you even have a menu of which apps are available here and it'll generally tell you system tools and it'll find the system tools that are started so I could theoretically start an X term that sort of thing but uh, this is a purpose container just to run one particular application so if we do a docker ps command we can see that I have my dia container still running up here at port 18,080 on the IP address of the docker host so let's do a docker stop dia and it will stop that container and let's do a docker remove dia and so now if we do a docker ps you can see that dia is gone all right 
So on your Docker host, if you do an IP route, IP route will list all of the network interfaces on your Docker host. The network interface that is connected to my main LAN is called QVS0. Yours will differ. But I can create a Docker network with the command docker network create, detach, Mac VLAN. Uh, subnet is going to be 172.16.0.0, subnet mask of 16, because that's what my main network is. And 172.16.0.1 is my gateway. And my parent is going to be QVS0, and I'm going to create a Docker network, and it's going to be created by the name of Exposed. So if I do a do Docker network ls, you can see here that I have a new network that I just created called Exposed, and it's of type Mac VLAN. Now, what we can do is we can create our DIA container using the docker run command name is DIA on a network called exposed and offered on 172.16.75.75. Now we notice we don't have any port numbers here. Uh, instead of having the dash P for ports, we have the dash net for networks. And when we do that, it creates itself, and if we do a docker ps, you can see that it is up and running, and it does not list any port numbers because there aren't any. However, if I go over to my interface, you could be going over to Portainer, I can see that dia is up and running. It's using the image Linux dash command. If I click on it, it's, it's there, it's showing me, has a warning that's not important. If I go over here to 172.16.75.75, uh, port 8080, it will come up, or it won't. So in my previous video about Mac VLANs, you notice that I was able to make the connection to the Mac VLAN but here, if I try to do a ping of 172.16.75.75, I'm unable to ping it. However, if I come up to a terminal on another device and I ping 172.16.75.75, I can ping it and it does return. So. That's one of the limitations you should understand about Mac VLAN. And since um, XPRA uses uh, both X Windows, X11, and it also uses HTML redirection, it's actually trying to contact itself from itself. And unfortunately, the limitation of Mac VLAN is that Mac VLAN a host cannot contact itself because, or a host cannot contact itself from the host on which it was hosted, which is the Docker host. And the reason for that is because it does not get a unique MAC address. So, in summary, we created our own custom Docker image to run the DIA diagramming program as an example application. You could use any program, and as a matter of fact, you can use more than one program when you build your container custom image. The custom image uses the XPRA display server located at the URL listed, and we created a Docker container using the custom image. We created a Docker network, as in my Docker networking presentation, and we created another container using the Docker network to provide the container on its own dedicated IP address. And unfortunately, we discovered that that last thing did not actually operate properly. The reason for that is a limitation in Mac VLAN.
where a Mac VLAN container cannot contact its host. And because of the way that Expra does its redirection back to uh, the HTML5 for the web browser, we're unable to use a dedicated Docker address for this particular application. So anyway, that's it for today, and thanks for listening. Please subscribe and like to the channel, and we'll see you next time.